like a paranoid woman, looking this way and that way, she woke up and came in at dawn. As Vanatha had said, her appearance was pitiful to behold. Her face and eyelids were swollen from crying. But for some reason, Kuntave did not take pity on her. She could not forget that the original cause of all the accidents that had befallen the Chola clan in the recent past was the conspiracies that took place in the Sambuvarayar mansion of Kadampur. The thought that her hero Damayan Kari Kalan was finally killed in her house was also provoking her. Suddenly, I remembered something else. Her Tamayan Kanamaran and the warrior of the Vanara clan are old cynics. It was because of that friendship that Vandiyathevar had gone to the Kadampur mansion. He came to know about the conspiracy that took place there. Kanamaran once had the intention of marrying his sister to Valadha Prince. That girl should be this one. Remembering this news, Kundave felt a new pressure on Manamekali. Aha! Why has she come looking for herself? Has she come to plead for father and son? When Sambuvarayar invited his Tame and Kari Kalan to the mansion, he was also offered this woman in marriage. Perhaps this ghostly woman had poured out her soul to Kari Kalan? Has she lost her will because of the untimely death of the man she wanted to marry? Have you come to say anything about it? Or, or, maybe even that? Kanamaran must have told her about his friend. Vandiyathevar is staying at her house. He has been there once before. He has stayed longer now. Maybe her mind is involved with Vandiyathevar? If so. So many thoughts appeared and disappeared on Kuntheve's screen very quickly. She stared at Kundeva as if she wanted to penetrate Manamekali's heart and know what was inside. Unable to bear the sight, Manamekala bowed her head. Two tears fell from her eyes and fell to the ground. Woman! Why dost thou weep? Is thy Damayan still alive? Was not my Damayan slain in thy palace? Should I not weep? But look at me. I do not weep, nor do I shed tears. It is not customary for the Matars of the Oblivion to weep over the slain," said Kundave. Manamegala looked up at the younger bratty, goddess. If my brother had died at the point of a sword, I would not have wept. But the dead, the dead, she gasped, hesitant to speak up. Kundave began to think that what she first suspected must be true. She might have given her heart to Aditha Kari Kalan. She seems reluctant to say that. So pity. Then she should be consoled. Woman. Take heart. Speak your heart boldly. It is not your father who died. It is my brother. Why should you cry for it? Perhaps you will regret that it happened when you were a guest in your house. What will you do about it? There were many elders in the house. Responsibility. Theirs is. No, goddess, no. The responsibility is mine. That's why no matter how much I tried to suppress my grief, tears did not stop flowing from my eyes. When I think that I killed that warrior with this knife in my hand, my chest seems to explode and shatter. Kundave Devi was startled, girl. What are you doing? Have you lost your mind? She said. No, no. I'm not delusional, if I get caught. I'll catch it from now on. I'm telling you what really happened. It was this Badaka who killed Adita Kari Kaler. I came to tell them the truth and get the punishment they deserve. Chi Chi. What slander is this? Do you make me believe that my mighty warrior, Damayan, was killed by a woman? Who taught you to say such things? No one teaches. Goddess. No one even refuses to believe what I say. Even my brother and father do not agree with what I say. Why are you talking nonsense? They must have taught you to talk like this or you yourself have come up with such a fantasy to save your father and brother. Devi. Why should I try to save them? They tried to marry me off against my will. First they said, get married to Madurn Dakadavar. Then suddenly they brought Aditha Kari Kaler and said, this is the one you should marry. If you marry, you will ascend to Chola Singh Gadanam. They said. Why should I intercede for those who saw me sacrificed like that? 
why should I confess that I have committed the crime they committed? Not at all. Manamekali said. Woman. What you say is more strange than anything. So many princesses of Rajadhirajas fled for the privilege of marrying my Damayan Kari Kalan. Then why do you say that your father and Damayan wanted to sacrifice you? Why did you consider life in the Chola clan to be such a terrible ordeal? Devi. I don't have a brother or sister who was born with me. I think of them as my own sister. Said Manamekali. You say you killed my brother. How dare you celebrate sisterhood with me? Asked the younger brat a little harshly. I have that right. Their brother Karagalar regarded me as his own sister. He wrote so in his handwriting. Just thinking about it makes my heart beat that I had to kill him. I came to them to ask what the atonement was. After saying that, Manamekali screamed again. The younger Brata said to Vanati in a low voice, Damn! This girl seems really paranoid. Did you bring her in at this time? What if she suddenly becomes paranoid? She said. Vanatha said, Sister. I am also worried. Please don't speak angrily. Let's send her back with a kind word. She said. Kuntave looked at Manamekali and said, Girl. What has happened has happened. Everything is the work of fate. Don't be sad. You can make me your own. You want to say something? What is it? Or you can say it some other time if you want. She said. No, no, I'll tell you now, sister. You're born women, so you'll know what I'm talking about. No matter how much I tell men, they can't know. Suppose a woman has given her soul to someone. While such a one is defenseless with no weapon in his hand, the other has a great sword in his hand. Assume that he is going to take and kill him. Then if the woman is truly in love, what will she do? Will she just sit and watch? Kundave immediately remembered Mandakini. Tears welled up in her eyes. How could she stand idly by? She would have crossed over and given her life to save her lover's life. Hearing this, Manamekali said, Aha! No one has left to suggest such an idea. Didn't I listen to the idea of Nandini, the bad girl? Did I kill Uthamar, who had intended to marry me to my lover, by the hands of this sinner? She was amazed. The younger bratty Kundave Devi turned and looked at Vanathi, The frenzy is coming. She said in a soft voice. Then, addressing Manamegali, Girl. Don't cry. Tell me what happened. Otherwise, will you tell me another time? She said. No, no, I'll tell you right now sister. My Damayan Kanamaran has been telling me about a friend of his for a long time. He came to our mansion in Katapur one day a few months ago. As soon as I saw him, my heart decided that this is my hero. With a slight tremor in his voice, the younger brat asked, And who is the blessed one who stole your heart? She asked. You call him blessed? No, no. When my soul went to him, my misfortune took hold of him. Today he lies imprisoned in the dungeon of this Tanjavur fort. Sister! Said the women of the Palyavatarayar house. Can the dungeon in this fort be so terrible? Those who are confined within it never come back alive. She said. That's all a lie, girl. Me and Vanati, who's standing here, have even been to the underworld some time ago. Goddess. Can I go to the dungeon? Can I see him just once? You still haven't told me who he is, girl. He is the prince of the monkey clan. His name is Vandiyathevar. Kunta and Vanati looked at each other. Vanati now interrupted, What are you so worried about him? What is his relationship with you? She asked. Manamegali looked at Vanati and asked, Who are you to ask that? She said angrily. He calmed down immediately and said, Mother, don't be angry. Aren't you Vanati, the princess of Kajumbalar? Your great father himself is the ruler of this fort today? I fall at your feet and ask. Give me a boon. 
release Vandiyadeva from the dungeon of your great father Pariyavilar. Instead of him, let me go to Patela. Tell them to put me in jail. I am the victim of the murder of Prince Karikalar. What is the justification for blaming someone else when I confess my crime? Devi. I also submit to you. If Kajumbalar Pariyavilara does not do justice, I want to appeal in person to their father emperor. You must help me. Said Manamekalai. Kundave's heart was churned with many emotions. She was reluctant to even visit Vandiyathevar in the underground prison. This woman has come forward to confess to the crime of murder because of her love for Vandiyathevar. But how true is what she says? How much imagination? Is she imagining things like this to save her lover? Perhaps she was talking about Nandini's Turpathana, so it is possible that Madame Ianji herself did the fatal act? No, no. She could not have done that harm. She says this to save Vandiyathevar from the crime of murder. This is evident from the way she speaks. No one will believe her words. They will not release Vandiyathevar until they believe her words. Still, let's see if we can find out anything more from her. There is definitely something mysterious about Karakalan's untimely death. Can it be materialized through this woman? Besides, Prince Valadha belonged to Karakalan's real guard. He was near Karakalan when he died. Even so, he was not saved. So he is derelict in duty. He should have saved Karakalan's life by giving his life. Even if he didn't kill, isn't there a proper punishment for dereliction of duty? Goddess! He never failed in his duty. What other evidence is there for that than your word? Here is the proof. There is the written proof of their master. Saying that, Mani Megali took a leaf that was inserted between her. Kundave read the paper with great interest. Yes, it is Aditha Karakalar's own signature. He wrote it himself so that no one else would know. He wrote to Kundave only. My dear sister, Charkavarthi Thiramakalar, to the youngest Pratiyar Kundave Devi, written by Aditha Karakalan. I have not been able to sleep at night for many years. Three years ago I committed a deadly sin. I killed a surrendered enemy. He and those who prayed for his life are grieving me. They do not let me sleep peacefully. When I came out early this morning without sleep I saw a comet falling and disappearing. Something was gone from my body at that time. Now there is only the nest. Sister. Let this delusion go with me. May Akambaranatha protect our dear father and blessed word. You and I dreamed so much about the greatness of the Chola Empire in our youth. I could not fulfill them. My brother will fulfill. He is the ruler of the three worlds. He will be assisted by Valadiyavarazan Vandiyathevan. Goddess! I am satisfied to know that Vandiyathevan has completed the tasks assigned by you well. Otherwise you wouldn't have sent him here on such an important matter. You would not have sent me to save me from my fate. Sister! If anything happens to me here, it is my destiny and my stubbornness that is responsible and not Vandiyadeva. He tried his best to stop him from coming to this Kadampur mansion as you told him. After coming to this mansion he follows me like a shadow. That is why this housewife is keeping friendship with Mani Mikalet. With her help he goes and hides ahead of where I intend to go. All to save me. But can one save the other from destiny and fate? You have heard that the small animals who are attracted by the mesmerizing power of the dancing dragon snake will get hurt and die as prey. Mother, I am also going to Nandini. You have warned me that she is our sister. Couldn't believe it. Yet there is something mysterious about her. I am going to find out. Anyway I will know the truth today. Whatever my fate, there is no blame on Vandiyadeva. He is fulfilling your orders perfectly. Sister. Kanamaran and Parthapendra fell in the trap of that magic goddess Nandini. Vandiyathevan was the only one who survived without falling like that. I don't know what gift to give him. There is a very hot girl in this house. I fell in love with her like my own sister. If Manamekali is married to Vandiyathevan, 
it will be a good gift for him. But, sister, you don't know whether this is acceptable or not. My lovely sister. I am going to entrust this paper to that woman. Fortunately she can't read. Do whatever you want with her. You are the best intellectual in our family. I walked on your word. I am going to enjoy its benefits. Tambi Aromazai may he act according to your idea and bring the Chola Empire to a state of greatness. It stood up at this point. Tears fell from Kundave's eyes as she finished reading the paper. Quickly wiping his eyes, he looked at Manamekali and said, Girl! How did you get this straw? Who gave it to you? She asked. Goddess! The prince himself gave it to me. Nandini had said something wrong about him. So I thought at first that he had written a love letter for me. I thought of putting it in the fire. Then I kept it safe to see what he had written. I gave it to my friend Chandramati and asked her to read it. My heart throbs when I think that I have slain with these hands the heroic man who has been written as my CEO born sister. Goddess! Give me the punishment of the slayer Badaki! Manamekali begged. Her excitement and the way she spoke clearly revealed that she was imagining this and saying it to save Vandiyadeva. Kundave knew it. Yet the straw she brought was not imaginary. It is Karakalar's own handwriting. This leaf is enough to save Vandiyathevar from prison and prevent the horrible crime of murder from being blamed on him. It would be great if this girl kept her mouth shut. But how to make this woman idle? Manamekali. Do you still believe that you killed Karagalar? She asked. Yes, goddess. You say that you asked me to read this leaf. In it, Carrie Gallen has mentioned that you are a half-born sister. Why should you kill someone who loved you so much? Had I read the paper earlier, I wouldn't have done that horrible thing. I did it without knowing his mind. That traitorous Nandini also corrupted my mind. Spoiled in what way? She often said that Carrie Kaler had a grudge against Vandiyadeva and would kill him even if she killed him. As if appropriate, Carrie Kaler raised his sword in his hand and said, Where is that Vandiyadeva? I will kill him here. After exclaiming, I believed it to be true. Immediately with the knife in my hand. Woman! Give up this talk. The world will not believe that even if I believe that an Abelai woman killed the heroic warrior Aditha Kari Kalan. Devi! Who else could have killed? Vandiyathev and I were the only ones in the dark room where Karakalar's body was lying. He did not kill. Then, I must have killed. You are dishonoring my dead brother by saying this. And think of another thing. Will the prince of the ape clan just admit that you have committed the crime of murder? Will he not want to save you as you want to save him? And as you insist, I killed him. He said. They will probably forgive you because you are a woman. They won't forgive him. Don't you know how terrible the punishment is for traitors who kill royals? Stop at the crossroads. Hearing this, Manamegali cried oh. Thumbi cried, sister. You must save him. She screamed.